Aloha, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome to the first session here, I think, after the opening. It was a great opening uh, of the conference. So welcome here today. Uh, we are going to be talking about a couple different things today. Um, I'm Danielle Bergen. I'm the Community Coordinator at Mental Health America of Hawaii. And I'll be presenting the first part of the Grow Your Garden presentation. And I am going to present on Keiki self-care. And then when I am done, it's going to be about 20, 25 minutes. I'm going to turn it over to Jessica Gleason. Jessica, do you want to introduce yourself? Aloha. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, my name is Jessica Gleason. I'm the Bookmobile Librarian at Wailuku Public Library here on Maui. Um, and it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks. Awesome. Jessica and I presented this a few months back. Uh, we've been collaborating with the Wailuku Library now for uh, most of the last year. We had done a presentation for them last year with our Kiki Self-Care, and Jessica's done some really great work in putting together some uh, Kiki Self-Care toolkits uh, uh, filled with wonderful books and information on how to grow your, your social and emotional garden. So we're going to dive into that. But let's talk a little bit about Kiki Self-Care first. So uh, this can be interactive. You can drop your questions into the chat and we can answer them when we get to the end of the training. Uh, I believe everybody will be getting a PDF of this presentation. And of course, any of the slides or any of the uh, the accessories that we have to this presentation, some of the things we'll talk about during it can easily be downloaded from our website, Mental Health America uh, or mentalhealthhawaii.org. Uh, and we can make those available to everybody there. So uh, let's drive right into this. Um, so let me go through the objectives again. We're going to learn how to how Keiki express uh, stress and sadness and different feelings that they have, identify ways to help them express those feelings, and we're going to list ways to build an emotional toolbox, which is really going to help them better deal with that, right? We can teach social emotional learning at a very young age, how to uh, practice mindfulness skills with our Keiki, and then you'll get some community resources that we're going to share at the end. So Keiki emotions, I love this picture. You know, we can see our young Keiki here, maybe like five, six years old, you know, very happy expressing their feelings through their facial expression. You know, you can tell through their body, you know, things are going good. I'm like enjoying myself and uh, I don't know, pretending to be an airplane or doing whatever, but you could definitely see she's having some fun in these pictures. But this is what I want you to know is our Keiki often express their feelings, not just with facially, but their body language how they play, and how they're acting when they're playing. Uh, so we really, as, as parents or adults or caregivers, right, we just want to be able to uh, look and watch and see how they're, how they're playing, right? See what's going on with their emotions, you know, see what's happening. Um, maybe they're doing zoomies around the room, or maybe they're all hyped up on something, or maybe they're actually... Uh, a little bit tired and a little bit cranky and kind of, you know, you can tell something's going on, but we're not sure, right? So these are times that we can always interject, right? And um, maybe have a conversation. Uh, they could be frustrated because of some reasons that we're not sure about. So, uh, you know, we want to check in with them and we're going to go through a check-in bug, which is one of our great little accessories that we have to this training in a little bit. But, you know, you can often just check in and see how they're doing. Just ask them, um, you know, depending on what the mood might be. Maybe they've been isolating a little bit and uh, they're being less restrictive and not joining everyone else, right? So sometimes you can ask them, you know, what's happening? What's going on? They might tell you a little story about something or about someone else. And really, they might be talking about them. And what we're really doing here, right, is we're teaching them how to learn about their feelings, right? We're teaching them how to basically cope with what's going on. And as they get through life, as they start to get into adolescence, from young childhood, uh, you know, it's going to help them do better in school. It's going to help them build their self-esteem, you know, they might have less behavioral problems because they're going to learn at a really young age on uh, different skills that they can actually build to be able to take care of themselves. And one of the more important things to remember is they are very observant, 
right? They will often watch everything that we do or other adults do and how our reactions are sometimes um, and how we react to certain moods that we have, right? Because sometimes they only maybe know sad or glad or angry, but if they see us and if we're getting angry, if they're maybe getting frustrated and we pound our hand on the desk or like maybe we throw something, they're going to pick that up. So we have to be careful, right? We have to be a good role model for our keiki, all right? So just remember, it's it's kind of a monkey see, monkey do thing, especially for our keiki as they're, you know, in their ages, like anywhere from two to six years old. So um, be that good emotional role model for them. Sometimes when we see that they're feeling blue um, and irritable, you know, they might be irritable and it can mask maybe feelings of sadness. So they're acting out a little bit. Maybe they're pushing boundaries. Okay. So you want, you want to check in, right? All they really, they're not quite sure how they feel. You have to remember as adults, we know when we're frustrated, we know that if we're upset about something that's not going our way, we have a lot of different ways to be able to, to deal with what's going on with us. And they might not be sure how to do that. So they're just irritable. They could just be really sad, but they don't know how to tell you that. Right. That's why we want to check in with them quite a lot. Sometimes it just could be unmet needs. You know, we always have to remember that they have a limited vocabulary, but we can actually teach them a broader vocabulary at such a young age. Let me give you a quick example. If you wanted to teach a young child, let's say who's three years old, the meaning of the word frustrated. Now, that's a big word, right? Give them a box that's all wrapped up and try to have them open it. Just tell them, can you open that box for me? And you're going to see that for a couple of minutes, they're not going to be able to figure out how to get that done. And they'll look at you and you can actually at this time teach them how to ask for help and say, you know what it is when you can't do something like this? I sometimes can't open these boxes and I get frustrated, right? Teach them the word frustrated. And a great example I'm using here is because Dr. G is worked, she created this training. She's worked with Keiki ages three to 18 in her career before she came to Mental Health America of Hawaii. And she actually taught a, a few of her three-year-olds how this word. And one time when her one three-year-old was like trying to get something done, she turned to go and go, Dr. G, I'm frustrated. She couldn't say the word, but she knew the feeling. So we can really teach our keiki that, right? Just have to remember, you know, they're going to act out their feelings on how they uh, are in their play. And so we really need to be noticeable. So this leads us to our check-in bug, right? Because we want to check in with them, right? We want to see how they're doing, right? So this is just a really easy sheet. You can get it right off of our uh, website. We have a lot of printable materials out there. And so... We're just going to check in with their emotions, right? We're going to just go to the basics, you know, have they slept, right? Did they take their nap or did they skip their nap? If we're seeing that they tired, we want to check in with them. Sometimes I might say that their stomach hurts, right? And then we check to see if they're sick, but they don't actually, they're not warm. They don't have a temperature, but, you know, have you eaten? Did you eat your lunch that I made for you? You know, maybe they just need a snack or maybe they're hangry. Right. We know that hungry and angry kind of go together. Sometimes a sandwich has done more to solve world problems than anything else, you know, especially for our youngest ones. So, you know, especially if they're looking, you know, overwhelmed or anxious. Right. These could be all things that's going on. Sometimes low energy, you know, might mean allergies or seasonal aspects that they have. Right. But we use this worksheet just to try and get what information we can to see. It might just just mean that they need to eat, or it might just mean that maybe we can put them back down for a short nap and that's going to make things feel better. So utilize this check and bug when you really want to try and see what's going on with your keiki. Now, this is called a Likert scale, and anyone who's been to many of Mental Health America of Hawaii's trainings know we love our Likert scale. So this is a Likert scale um, about going from upset to neutral, to feeling good, from left to right. Obviously, you can tell from the first picture here. And this is a good Likert scale to use for kids maybe eight years or older um, because this is a range of emotions that they might be able to feel. So a lot of times if somebody is really upset, right, we want to check in with them. And we want to try to find out, you know, uh, 
create some examples of what it's like to be in this range, you know, and then help them share their personal stories, for example. So if you see one of them who's just like really, really upset, we want to try and create some anchor points. So try to get them talking and say, okay, I can see you're really upset. I can see you're really mad. You're really sad about something. You're angry. Can you tell me what's going on? And they might tell you a story about themselves or they might use someone else as an example or it might be that they might have their dolly or something and say that, that, you know, she's not doing what I want her to do. Right. And so uh, she's absolutely frustrated or real angry about that. So a lot of times you can use this as an anchor point so that the next time that she might be feeling like that, or you're noticing say, well, do you remember the time you told me the story about your dolly? Is it kind of like that? Right. Or is it just maybe you're not quite as bad, maybe like the next orange face. So you can actually print this out and have this as well. But we're going to give them and try to give them examples to each of these areas on how they feel. Now, neutral, right? That's a pretty common place. I think most of us are in neutral most of the time. You know, I think it's unrealistic to think that we could be happy all the time and just joyful. I mean, it'd be a wonderful thing. But, you know, the world is the way it presents to us. You know, our moods are going to go up and down. Sometimes when someone is just, you know, they might be just your cake. You might be quiet and just playing and just, you know, you're checking in. They seem okay. Or maybe they're actually a little bit bored. All right. Sometimes, you know, neutral could kind of help them go to a board place. So at that point, we can always check in with them and see, you know, is there something we can do to make maybe you feel better? And again, we create those stories at that place as well, right? We help them identify what makes them feel happy, right? And what you can do when you're upset to try and change your mood. That's where building our self-care, our cakey self-care toolkits, right, are really going to come into play. And we're going to get to that in just a minute or two. But we can actually help them move through these range of emotions by giving them these really good social emotional learning skills at such a young age. They're not actually realizing that they're learning those things, but they're going to be really good down the road for them. Now, for our youngest kids, we can make it much more simpler, right? For they're at Keiki ages three to seven. Just use the stoplight. Again, you can print this out as well. They know red means stop. So if they're really, really moving around and really, really busy and whatnot and going on, uh, we can just say, okay, let's do red light. Let's stop for a second. Let me check in with you. Let me see what's going on. Um, you know, they could be upset. They could be angry. You're just not sure what's happening. Um, check in, see if they're going to can tell you that story. You can teach them the stories at a very young age as well. Yellow just means to slow down a little bit. And of course, green is go when you're feeling good. So this is a very similar to what we just talked about on the other sheet, but about a bunch, you know, smaller scale with our youngest ones. So I would suggest using this and, and printing anything you want from our websites that we have. You know, it's all downloadable material and our printable materials on the site. Teaching emotions to our keiki, right? A lot of times we feel, some people feel that our youngest keiki, we can't teach them much more than just like what happy you know, we're glad or sad or maybe angry. It's just some really basic ones, but we can really teach them more than that. Like I gave you that example of the word frustrated, right? We can help them expand their vocabulary, <clears throat> but emotionally too, we want to be able to teach them more how to normalize their feelings, right? Especially if they're feeling anxious, a lot of times when someone's feeling anxious, I know as adults or with Kiki, when we remember we checked in a little bit ago when we said, you know, are you feeling, you say your, your stomach hurts, but you don't have that temperature. When people are real anxious or stressed, a lot of times it manifests itself in that physical part of their body, right? So once we can recognize that, we want to see what we can do to try and lessen that anxiety. Right now, this seems like it could be an advanced skill, but really it's helping them just to learn how to do some self soothing techniques or decreasing their acting out or behaviors, right? By checking in with them and seeing what you can do to change that behavior. So, for example, if you took a four year old who said that their stomach hurt and you could tell that they were very anxious and maybe pulled out of your emotional toolkit, which we're going to get into in just a minute, teach them how to blow bubbles, right? Do it 
by just taking a deep breath and slowly blowing bubbles out, you're actually teaching them deep diaphragmatic breathing. Because the fact is, is when we all get stressed and anxious, right? Our body is filled with cortisol, which is a stress hormone. The one thing that clears it out is oxygen. Now, you're not going to explain the science to a four-year-old, but you can teach them the bubble breath. So as they get older, right, they're learning the self-care skills. It's helping them build their own mental health skills. And we're building skills now that's going to help them last forever. So as they actually get into adolescence and into high school as teens, they know that deep breathing can calm them down because they learned at such a young age. And it's a great way to teach this because we're teaching them emotional skills through their emotional toolbox, which brings us to our emotional toolbox. As you can see in the upper right-hand corner, uh, that's our emotional toolbox. Uh, now, we talk metaphorically about this a lot of times, but with our youngest, Keiki, I really suggest you put a little box together, a place that they can go to, especially when we're hoping to try and get their feelings changed to help them make them feel better if they've been sad or upset about something, right? Teaching them the coping skills. So when you notice that they're in that red zone or that other sad orange zone, you want to try and change the mood and change the thing. Say, what can I, what can we do to help ourselves? Should we go over to our toolbox and see what we have in there? So for kids who are two, three, four, five years old, what can we put in there? We can put in their favorite stuffed animals their plushies, maybe a movie that they like to watch, books that they like to have read to them, right? Uh, different music that they love, you know, whatever that is, your favorite blankie, right? We have all these things in our emotional toolbox. So when they're up stress and they're stressed, ask them to just pull out what they need to help them feel better. And sometimes they might pull out more than one thing. And just like all of us as adults, we sometimes need more than one thing out of our emotional toolbox to make us feel better too, right? So we're teaching them at this young age that there's things that they can do right? Filled with favorite things, sensory items. Maybe it's uh, something that is just really good fragrance that they like to smell or whatever that is. They're learning that self-care at a very young age. So we talked a little bit in the beginning when I said, you know, some people think we can't teach mindfulness to our youngest Keiki, right? But when you can teach mindfulness to somebody, basically mindfulness just means we're going to teach you how to be right here, right now, not in the future, not in the past, things that are often cause anxiety and stress. But we want to teach you how to just be right here because we want to help reduce your stress, your anxiety, um, because sometimes this can lead to depression. We want to improve your attention and your focus. And by doing all these things, we improve your mental wellness, right? This is really, really simple. And I know Jessica's going to go into some good things on mindfulness as well. But let, let's take a look at a couple of these, all right? So bubble breathing, right? Bubble breathing I just talked about. I'm going to slide over here if I can reach this. I forgot to pull it out before the training. And... If I can find my bubble wand, of course I can't. I had it in here a little while ago, but the last training I did, I pulled out a bubble wand just to show you the example of blowing bubbles. But when you teach a young person how to take a deep breath, take it in slow, and the slower that you blow out the bubbles, the more bubbles you're going to get. You're teaching them to slow down their system. You're teaching them to be right here, right now with their bubble blast. You're teaching them to be present. And you can even add on to this to even make it a little bit more fun and maybe teach them to do like a cat breath or something like that and say, okay, let's pretend we're a kitty cat. We're going to take in a deep breath. And then when we let out the air, we're going to sound like a cat who's like kind of hissing at you. So you take in your deep breath and you let it out, right? Or maybe even a bunny breath, right? Some of the little animals they might relate to. You know, our bunnies that have our little noses and they often take, kind of taking a deep breath like this. We teach them how to take in a deep breath with their nose and hold it and blow it out. So make it fun. Make them 
not realize that they're actually calming themselves down. And then they're going to know how to do this. The next time they remember that they're stressed and anxious, oh, I'm going to go, Kim, where's my bubbles, mommy? I want to have my bubbles. Oh, they're in your toolkit, right? Always have a good little pack of bubbles in there as well. A rainbow walk is another one. Um, my sister Maureen, uh, a little younger than me, and she has a couple grand young grandchildren and often my niece Patricia, um, her child, uh, Alana. She's taking care of the three of them sometimes. And she lives out in the country. So sometimes she takes them out on a little walk. And she uses the rainbow walk as a great example when she gets them outside. So because they're sometimes scattered and they're running around. And so she gets them all together. Let's go out for a walk. And when they get outside, they're walking, you know, into the whatever, you know, like this time of year, because it's back east, you know, it's fall. So you have all these different colored leaves. So, okay, okay, who can find a red leaf? Find all the things that are red for me. And then the kids are all looking and they're talking, right? And they're settling down. They're, they're all working together. And okay, find something orange or find something yellow, right? Communing with nature, looking for the different colors, right? It helps us stay present, Right. And other benefits is, is that you're not only being mindful, but you're getting a little exercise, too. And you're maybe hiring the kids out so they can go and take their nap in a little bit as well. And other great mindfulness, too, are calming jars. This is something Dr. G had found. And I just love this. So in our Oahu office, we have a whole line of these calming jars just like that. And we suggest using plastic, plastic jars like a mason jar. But make sure it's plastic and not glass because the last thing you want it to do is break. So what you need is um, uh, just plain water, glitter glue, and a little bit of food coloring and maybe a little bit of extra glitter as well. So when you put it together, you fill it up with about half water. You add your, <coughs> excuse me, glitter and glitter glue or clear glue, right? And the hot water that you're going to start with is going to help dissolve that in the food coloring. And then the more glue you use, the more if you turn it upside down, it's going to slowly settle and you're going to see the different colors and the different little glitters come up, right? So it's such a fun thing to play with and just to build them. And then you'll often find, you know, you can just take them, turn them upside down. It helps you stay in the present, just looking at that, just looking at the beautiful colors that are inside, you know, and it's a fun source of art expression, right? To help not only put it together because it's visual, right? But it's also auditory and tactile, right? You're getting all those benefits from there as well. Okay. Mindful parenting. So a lot of times we're hard on ourselves that we're not doing as good as we could, or maybe we're trying to do too much, or we're beating ourselves because we don't think we're doing enough. Sometimes you just got to realize you're doing your best. You can't express to be 100% all the time. Sometimes 70% is all we got. And then we just have to know that that's the best we can do at that time. So just do the best you can do. Always try to be curious, not only about your keiki, but about yourself. You know, learning how you can communicate more clearly and simply with these by maybe, you know, by them using these, some of these simple tools we're talking about. Um, remember when we talked about monkey see, monkey do, we want to model gratitude. All right. You, we want to show them what it's like to be grateful about things, to be thankful. Sometimes the, even the youngest cakey doesn't know what the word gratitude means. And sometimes I do health fairs where I'm, you know, engaged with cakeys and I have this little wheel of emotions and they swim them around and gratitude will come up. And I get like a four year old. I said, well, do you know what gratitude means? They go, you know, just shake their head. OK, well, what if mommy goes out and buys you a shave ice? How do you feel? Oh, I feel good, right? Are you are you thankful that your mommy went and bought that? Yeah, 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 I am. That's what gratitude is, right? So you can teach them these emotions, very simple things. So try to model that with them, show support, show your interest, and just play with them and have fun as well, right? I mean, they're not going to be that age forever. And I know that every parent I've ever talked to with children, they always say they grow up too fast, right? Other things that we have, the different tools, we have a Busy Beach page on our website, on our Facebook page. We have a monthly book club. Our Busy Bees was created during the uh, pandemic. 
And it's just a little place where kids can go and, you know, see different B stories or jokes or things like that. In our monthly book club, we have different books. And some online, we were actually during the pandemic, we were doing and reading book stories to different people. I would get different folks uh, that I know would just come online and just read a story for us, which was really fun. Um, this is our website and our Get Connected page. So you get connected with our uh, resources. And these are all the printable information and activities. Every activity I talked about or showed you on a lot of those slides, you can print from our website. That's our website down below, mentalhealthhawaii.org. And then just some resources that we have. Of course, you can always call 988 um, which goes directly to the neighbor islands toll free Hawaii Cares line of 800 753 6879. If there's something that's happening, if there's some stressful situation that you need to talk to somebody about, um, of course, the Hawaii Poison Hotline is a great number to have as well. And you can also print this from our website, and helpyourkeiki.com is a great little uh, website to go to for different ideas on how you can help your keiki with various amounts of things. This is our contact information. My office is in the uh, J. Walter Cameron Center on Mahalani Street. Uh, we have connect conjunction with no shame, get help org about learning how to ask for help. And there's our website. Our office number is down below. And uh, if you're ever interested in doing a screening for your keiki, a youth test or a mental health screening for yourself, you can always either take a picture of that and uh you know, go on that QR code, or you can just click onto our website and you can actually take a mental health screening just to give you some insights um, on your own self or maybe your keiki if they're, if they're doing all right. And there's actually a parental test as well. So at this point, I am going to turn it over to my partner, Jessica Gleason from the Wailuku Library. I am going to stop share and let her take over and then we can address any questions at the end. So thank you. Thanks, Danielle. <clears throat> I'm so happy to be here. Let me just share my screen. And I was inspired by Dr. Goss's work around Keiki self-care. And this, the result of that inspiration is um, what I will share with you today. All right. Okay. So um, I am a librarian and of course, I love books and I love reading and learning. And I heard the word be curious in Danielle's presentation. And that's really at the core of who I am and what I want to help cultivate in the people that come into the library or on the bookmobile. Um, so growing my garden, Kiki self-care toolkits uh, were done in collaboration with Mental Health America of Hawaii. Um, Dr. G is awesome. Danielle is awesome. And I really wanted to partner with uh, an organization that would teach me about mental health, but also provide uh, opportunities for me to see how we can partner, you know, work together to create something that will be of use to people in our community. Um, which Ho'oi Kaika Partnership is all about, which is I'm so uh, delighted that I was first learned about it through Tracy Robello, um, the early childhood literacy coordinator through Maui Family Support Services. Um, and I want to give a shout out to the Maui Friends of the Library who are incredible. They've been around for over 100 years supporting public libraries, and they're the reason that I could purchase all the materials that I did for these toolkits. I also want to say that we're part of the Hawaii State Public Library System uh, with 51 branches statewide. Uh, if you haven't gotten your library card, it's this little red beauty up here. Um, I recommend you come to a public library. You can go online and register for a digital card that's good for 45 days. Um, so libraryshawaii.org is the website. And that digital card will give you access to streaming content like Canopy is a streaming content platform, databases, ebooks, e audiobooks. It's just a rich resource, gives you a taste of what's available online. And then you come into a library with your ID and we'll give you a card that's good for five years and it has to be renewed every five years. So that library card is really your gateway to um, what the public library has to offer. And with that card, you can check out a Keiki self-care toolkit. So the basis of this 
a project. I did my research like a good librarian, and I researched uh, what is really a buzzword in all areas of life now, which is really good in curriculum. You'll see, I'm sure you all know this term, social and emotional learning. And uh, CASEL, uh, I went there first um, because they have a lot of resources. Um, and CASEL, if you're not sure what that is, is the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. And I love this graphic. Uh, it really demonstrates how uh, integrated social and emotional learning is. Um, I would consider uh, the, the outer layer, the communities, um, we would be part of that, you know, the library system, family. I am a mother, so all families and caregivers. And then, of course, in the schools and classrooms. So it really permeates um, all aspects of a child's life. And uh, social emotional learning is the process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to develop healthy identities, manage emotions, and achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. And that's Castle's definition. And I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, and really, it has measurable outcomes in terms of reducing um, what we would call negative outcomes um, in later in life. And uh, so it's so it's at the core of what this project is and what I intend to do with the development of the collection that I have, especially for young children, and in the spaces that I hope to create um, in libraries and to cultivate in families and family settings particularly. So the garden metaphor was pretty easy. I can't remember my colleague and I, Tammy uh, Ching, really were during the pandemic, um, were trying to find ways to really address the mental health crisis that we were seeing and even experiencing ourselves. And so the garden is such a lovely, metaphor, there are endless analogies you can make between um, your own physical, mental, spiritual well-being and growing a garden. And for kids, like we want to teach them the science of gardening and the, you know, the basics of that, but also aligning it with their own mental well-being is really important. So Thich Nhat Hanh, who I was um, delighted to hear in the um, the introduction, uh, the opening session, he was mentioned, uh, a Vietnamese uh, Buddhist monk, activist, peace activist. And I love this quote, um, every one of us already has the seed of mindfulness. The practice is to cultivate it. So the idea behind this metaphor is to plant the seeds, water the seeds of that will help us grow and to do that with intention. So Mental Health America of Hawaii, I attended one of Dr. Goss's Kiki self-care trainings like a year ago, I think, and uh, was very inspired, uh, particularly when I perked up when she brought up book recommendations. And I thought, oh, I know about that. And um, she's a big book fan. And obviously, they have a book club and everything. So I was like, yes, this could be a really good partnership. Um, so these are her handouts, which um, Danielle had mentioned uh, in her presentation that are available. So I linked this, all of these slides are uploaded already to the session description. So you can click on them and access uh, Mental Health America of Hawaii's site, as well as the um, printables that they've created. And speaking of bubble breathing, that's in the Keiki Self-Care Diaphragmatic Breathing handout, which is cool. It also has pinwheel breathing and teddy bear breaths. Um, so it's really, an excellent source of information. And these are handouts that I also have printed and included as take-home uh, items in the Kiki self-care toolkits. So this is what it looks like. Um, we found these bags pretty reasonably on Amazon, which, you know, I try to avoid Amazon, but it was really hard not to, to stay on budget. Um, and there's a take-home packet, so it contains um, Mental Health of America handouts, as well as uh, some of the uh, 
Hawaii State Library System helped us with graphics and with a coloring sheet. It also contains activity sheets that you get to keep. And for a limited time, we have boxes that you can that are included that you can keep and create your toolbox, your toolkit that Danielle had mentioned. Um, they're little, but you can put your activity cards in it and then any sensory items, things that are soothing um, or comforting into the, the box and decorate it. Um, so basically, those are key take homes. And then we have these uh, activity guide cards um, that have all the book titles on them and then um, are sort of a nice little guide for a parent or caregiver. And again, the Friends of the Library of Maui, Friends of the Library was amazing in uh, granting us funding for this project. Uh, right now, they're available for checkout at Wailuku Public Library, but we're planning to give some to Kihei and Makwa Library. And unfortunately, we lost our Lahaina Library and lost whatever, a lot, you know, in addition to the collection. And we did lose some of these in that as well. So I need to seek more funding for more kits. And then this link here, I think will be dropped in the chat, um, is has all the print, the materials that are included, the printed in these packets is available at this link. So you can print them yourselves or see what's, get more detail on what's included. So there are four themes, um, soil. So we really thought, probably overthought what this meant, but Basically, the soil kit will contain books about identifying emotions, validating emotions, um, of course, include grounding and mindfulness techniques. Um, and these books, you know, there are so many more, obviously, but we had to choose. And at the time, these were are really lovely books. Based on feedback, Layla um, has been really well received, and that's been my favorite for a long time. It's about a baby baboon in a very big family who feels overwhelmed and runs away and meets a lizard who teaches her how to be. And it's lovely. So we try to incorporate books that are story driven, um, but also nonfiction books like My Mixed Emotions, which um, is really more for the, your grown up, the grown up that does reads these kits. Um, I find it helpful because it simplifies you know, the physiology of feelings. Um, it covers multiple topics in like really digestible um, sized, you know, with images and, and something that's easy to read. So for busy parents, you know, I think this is a great source and for older kids as well. And Ravi's Roar, this is a great book with part of a big, bright feeling series that covers all kinds of other emotions um, in a story-driven format. And Outside In, I highly recommend, it's poetic and beautiful, and it really cultivates um, mindfulness of your environment and, and just noticing, which is really important aspect of mindfulness. Uh, then this is, these are the activity cards that come with the kit. Um, so calming jars, like Danielle mentioned, this is uh, Mental Health America and also Sensory Dough. Those are there, the, those are available on their website as well. Um, calming jars reminds me of the book Moody Cow. I don't know if anyone's ever read that book. <laughs> it's, it's a little on the wordy side, but it's worth it, you know, to read it maybe with older kids or summarize, but it, it, involves a calming jar and it's a perfect explanation of how to use it um, when someone is really unregulated, when a child's unregulated. So these are awesome. And then of course the emotion scales that um, Danielle mentioned. So the the red, yellow, green is more for the littles, you know, young, I think three to five maybe Danielle. And then like for older kids, three to seven up here, and then older kits that have more ability to learn about the nuances of, of different feelings. And then the next um, category is air, because plants, you know, we need space and air for seeds to grow. Um, so when things get overwhelming, we can drop into our breath, which is something I am still learning and practicing as a grown up. And these are some great books. 
Breathe Like a Bear and uh, is a great one for different options of how to do different fun breathing exercises. Take a Breath is fun for grownups to read because it's a story about this very, um, I don't want to use the word neurotic, but <laughs> it's kind of a crazy bird. Oh, thank you, Danielle. So three to six would be for the the easier, the red, yellow, green light for an emotion scale. This is a really sweet story. And so is this about mindfulness. Um, yeah, so that's air. And then these are the air cards. And Tammy had found this um, exercise of you can also do shape, learning shapes and practicing exhale, inhale as you. So it incorporates another sensory, you know, of touch and uh, into the breathing practice. Um, and again, these are all available through the link um, in the chat. And then water, we figure, okay, we need soil, we need air, we need water to nourish and refresh our seeds to help them grow. And so this was a harder category because it's very individual, but the idea behind this is to help children either recognize or practice ways that really help them to move. So like when Danielle was mentioning, if somebody's really... Um, has a lot of energy and needs to move. You know, there's mindful moves, has a lot of exercises and things that are fun, kid-oriented. Um, Crafting Calm offers you art and activities for mindfulness, um, some of which we kind of used in our activity cards. And then we tried to incorporate a story. This is more of a it's a story, but it's it's sometimes all I need is me. It's such a great message anyway about resiliency, which is, of course, part of our conference today of understanding that we have what we need within us. Um, and that in addition to having a caring environment and, and grownups that are curious about themselves and, and able to model, you know, better ways of, of coping. And then where happiness begins has a, a companion book where sadness uh, begins, lies, I think. Anyway, it's the author Eva Eland. And that's a sweet metaphorical story about our ability to recognize it when we see it and to allow happiness in. So that's the idea behind water. And so we have um, Mental Health America has a great cakey self-care bingo card, which could give you some inspiration. We have a pom-pom buddy, which uh, Tammy came up with. So you have the materials in the kit to make a little pal that will fit in your box. Um, and then we have some other fill-in activities. So these are things that are the idea is to keep them in your box, um, particularly for the grown-up who may want to refresh on uh, what what they learned while using the kit. And finally, of course, seeds need sunshine, plants need sunshine, we need sunshine. And so the idea behind this theme is to give ourselves the compassion, loving kindness and gratitude within to, toward ourselves, but outward as well. Um, treating ourselves with kind words and affirmations, positive thinking, and so these are some titles that uh, some are nonfiction, like I am, I can, or is more of a affirmation, different ways every day of the year to practice um, self-affirmation. I love this book, I Am, um, Affirmations for Resilience, because it's very simple. And I actually did it for myself, which <laughs> is new a new practice for me, but it's meant for kids. But honestly, these things, these are books meant for grownups as much as they are for kids. Um, Thankful, of course, is about gratitude and it has like a little gratitude chain, that uh, idea that you can do. Um, uh, the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu wrote this little book of joy, which is quite lovely. Um, the more you give is about intergenerational uh, passing on love through the generations. And I Am You, a book about Ubuntu, is a great book as well about the concept of Ubuntu, um, which uh, is 
about shared humanity, compassion, and oneness. And of course, I want to incorporate more Native Hawaiian books, which is why I'm super glad we're going to launch. Um, I'll be part of introducing Kala Boy's Adventure to Make Pono, which is a lovely project um, that I was very privileged to be um, invited to participate in. And then Sunshine, the activity cards. So we did like a gratitude chain, which went with the book Thankful. Um, this is a little sun that you could draw or color in with things that make you happy, ways to share kindness. A happiness jar is always cool, just like a gratitude jar would be. Um, and then we have this like uh, affirmation mirror. So every kid has a little um, mirror sticker inside of it. And then it some ideas about looking into it and saying, I am kind. I can try new things. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. I can forgive others. Those are just examples. Um, so these are just meant to be sparks of inspiration for parents and caregivers. And um, finally, the toolbox itself, we bought a bunch of these, but then we had to like look at the price point. Um, they're sort of like pencil boxes that you can draw on and color in. So the idea is to put the cards in there, but honestly, it's whatever you want it to be. One of our uh, coworkers, Nicole, did this beautiful reminder of, you know, her, her version of a self-care toolbox. Um, and she did a really lovely job. So it's not just for littles, it's for grownups too. So um, I just want to, these slides will be available, so I won't spend too much time on each one. Um, but I highly recommend The Gift of Story, exploring the affective side of the reading life. Um, this is, encapsulates from a teacher, school librarian teacher's perspective, the effect of reading um, on all aspects of a child's social emotional journey and identity and how they cope. Um, and that's where we, if we can see ourselves in books, children can see themselves in books. It's a powerfully healing, um, experience. And so I'm really mindful of that, uh, when I'm purchasing books, recommending books, and the, basically, he writes about stories, healer, inspiration, clarifier, compassion, and connector. Um, and it's really incredible, great for teachers particularly, but, you know, from a librarian parent perspective, I also gained a lot from it. And um, feel free to read these quotes. Um, I really loved tying in health, mental health, all types of health. It's a really holistic view of how reading, sharing, recommending, and celebrating stories in which children can see themselves are practices of healing and a way to write a healthier future for our world into being. And Dr. Sayanti Dasgupta is quoted from this book. Um, again, these are, I won't go through every uh, bullet point, but uh, essentially read aloud tips. You probably may already know this. <laughs> Uh, but when we're engaging with parents and caregivers in the community, um, I really want to start to do this intentionally or demonstrate it with parents or for them. Um, how to read aloud. You know, librarians are here to help you choose books um, and possibly model or answer questions and connect you to great literature. Um, but honestly, anything your child wants to read is fantastic. So if it's whatever it is. And I'm sure you'll have to read it over and over again, and parents know that. Um, but that's part of early literacy building is to the repetition and the engagement with books. And so essentially all these tips can be summarized into the idea of dialogic reading, um, which you can, uh, I have some resources that I'll share uh, at the plenary session, but basically is very intentional, interactive, and conversational. Um, and this is intuitively what I do at story times and with my own children, but learning more about the, the uh, process, which is you know quite involved and intentional. 
really made it click for me how important it is and that parents may already be doing this. And maybe if they need a confidence boost, tell them they're already, you know, they're their child's first teacher, right? And so it's so important to read aloud to kids, to build empathy, create a lifelong love of reading, which is part of our mission at the public libraries. Um, of course, improving language and listening skills, facilitating important and or difficult conversations, which is of particular interest to me um, in terms of these toolkits and some other book kits I'd like to share with you a little later on. And then, of course, activating and empowering your imagination. So I had to do the reading plug. And then why read children's books? And it's not just for, for kids. So this New York Times article pretty much says it. it I felt seen when I read this, this article. Um, but children's books say the world is huge. They say hope counts for something. They say bravery will matter. Wit will matter. Empathy will matter. Love will matter. And um, that pretty much sums that up. I know we have to wrap up, so I'm going to let you read that. Uh, in the slides. And then these are links to uh, further recommended reading for the different themes I discussed, some more recommendations for grown-ups, scholarly articles. You can access database articles if you're a teacher, librarian, health professional, just a curious person. You can access these um, online with your library card, some other resources and links. Talking is Teaching is a great campaign that I'm happy to be part of. There's my contact info, uh, Bookmobile. There's a video there that I created that kind of gives you a sense of what we do. This is what I would love for you to check out if you're interested. Uh, family book discussion kits for ages 4 to 7 and 8 to 11. And they talk about things like identity, belonging, uh, justice and systemic racism, activism, uh, I'm probably forgetting one. Oh, immigration and refugees. So this came out of also the pandemic, Black Lives Matter, all of the issues that are always around, but really came to the forefront. And this was based on another library system that created this template and graciously shared that with me. So I'm really excited about it um, and hope you'll check it out. Lastly, um, I just wanted to share this really sweet coloring sheet that our um, Makwa librarian, branch manager, Dakota Cotton, created um, to express her love. And uh, and we've, we, we, we will build again, you know, and the bookmobile is going out there when we can, but we're actively working on um, how to rebuild. And that is the end of my presentation. So thank you so much. I hope we are relate. Nope, yeah. we're good. Thank you so much, both Jessica and Danielle. We've got a couple minutes for any questions. Um, I know Jolena asked in the chat the name and author of um, the book associated with the calming jar. You're muted, Jessica. Yeah, I'm going to look up the author. It's um, okay. Moody Cow, and he's a really moody cow. Um, I guess there's a series, but the um, it's Moody Cow Meditates, and it's by Carrie McLean, M-A-C-L-E-A-N, Moody Cow Meditates. Thank you. Um, we can open it up for any other questions you guys might have. You can unmute and ask, or you can send them in the chat. Sierra asked in the chat, do you know if the libraries will be doing more story times for Keiki soon? Yes, I know. You miss you miss that. We um my Luku Library now has uh Kathleen Adjutin who uh came over from Kihei and she's like a superstar. Everyone loves her. People are mad actually that we stole her from Kihei Library. <laughs> she's gonna start working on weekly story times at Wailuku Library. Um Makwa Library, not yet. Kihei, once they get a children's librarian. So um, I know it's just a time where we're doing our best um, to provide. I know that's a critical service. So you can be on the lookout or call Wailuku Library. Um, 
oh Molokai Molokai Library I yeah so Molokai I'm not sure but but if you check the libraryshawaii.org website um, we have an events calendar that will be updated so you can search that Perfect. anyone else have any questions before we end today um looks like there's a question about does this include molokai um do you mean the story times or the self-care kits oh for both um molokai i guess um you could check the libraryshawaii.org for the story time schedule um and then the kits I'm trying to expand. So um, they, it is not requestable right now between libraries, but I want to work with um, all of the Maui County branches to provide for that. But if in the meantime, if you check out the website, it'll have all the materials and it'll have the book lists, which you can order books from any library in the system, which is fantastic. So that's a start anyway. Well, again, thank you both so much for presenting. Thank you for everyone um, being here. Um, I will be ending this um, meeting in about a minute. If you want to stick around, if you have any questions, um, you can get contact info from either of the presenters um, or you can check back on the website for that information as well. Okay. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Danielle, so much. It thank was a great you. presentation. Um, we'll, we'll have about 10 minutes between um, the next session. Okay, great. Thanks okay. for your help, Jenna. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Appreciate so you. much. Bye, Danielle. Bye. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jessica. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.